Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Captain Fizz and Mask Guy podcast. I am, I am Captain Fizz. And once again, greetings from the seventh moon of thunder. I am that mask guy. And we bring you today on Tim Burton's birthday. Happy 57th birthday, Tim. He's no older than 22. And I refuse. <laughs> He's 22. I don't know. Well, he's done at least 22 really great movies. Oh, at least 22. At least 22. Uh, just, uh, and the prep for this show, I actually went back to uh, to kind of, you know, look at, you know, Tim Burton's movies and everything. And just to kind of, you know, you know see you know, all the ones he's done. Because I, I knew, you know, for a fact that there was a lot that I probably didn't know about. And I didn't realize just how much of an impact that Tim Burton actually had on me growing up. See... I don't need to go back and rewatch or relook at any of Tim Burton's movies. Uh, I'm a huge Tim Burton fan. Books, movies, everything. Like honestly, just he's been a huge influence in my genre of movies and watching and reading and everything. Um, I talk him up to probably quite more important to me than Harley Quinn. And that's pretty impressive. And you know, don't take his word on this. You know, this guy actually will go on auctions to try to purchase timber and memorabilia and books. Which I've been outbid on almost every single one of them. Oh, that you did get some... Uh, I got recent, some books. Some recent books. Uh, Emily the Strange or something, wasn't it? Yes. Well, I, I'm not entirely sure if it's his, but it doesn't matter. It's in my collection. It, it, it's the whole Tim Burton genre kind of thing, but... Yes, no, Tim Burton's a huge, huge part in what I watch and and all that. I, I don't know about you. Obviously, you're finding some that you, you that you like that you didn't know he well, did. You know, um, I think it goes all the way back to, uh, uh, excuse me, Pee Wee's Big Adventure back in 1985. Yeah, which actually a lot of people don't realize that he w- had a part in that. He actually went off and he directed it, which kind of shocked me when I first heard this. I remember watching, you know, Pee Wee, you know, as a kid and everything. And I saw, um, back in the day, they, you know, were very careful with how they edited movies for television. So any bad language or anything that might seem to be a bit a little risque for, you know, even prime time back then was edited out. And so, uh, Pee Wee's Adventure was a big thing for me as a kid. I remember seeing it and think, thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, a lot different than today's day where they don't really care what's put on TV, you know, uncensored, 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 much like our last episode. Yeah, I make absolutely no apology apology for that. I invented, eh, invited that, that guy on the show. I, I personally loved it because it brought me to a whole new level, which was good. And here's the thing. And we're, we're, we're starting to go down the rabbit hole, which seems kind of fitting considering we're talking about Tim Burton here. Yeah. But, I mean... Uh, you didn't want to have Sweet Daddy D on that last episode. Uh, yeah, he, he, he's a very interesting guest, as our last episode has proven. He, he has this way of, um, being more uncensored than myself, and that says a lot. Well, let's put it this way, considering that you usually are on your best behavior for the show. And I was not on Sunday. Yeah, not a Sunday. But you know what? Now we're going to climb back out of the rabbit hole for, you know, well, the time I, being. I, I like Alice. Well, that's just it. I mean... Um, and the hookah smoking caterpillar. <laughs> you know, I, as people are aware, uh, he uh, had a big part in bringing a live-action Alice in Wonderland uh, to the big screen uh, featuring Johnny Depp as the Mad Hatter. Uh, he's actually only going to be the producer in... Uh, the live-action version of Alice through the Looking Glass, but, which I thought was kind of strange. But, you know, he has a pl- part in it, so, you know, a, he has, you know, some sort of say in it, so that's still not a bad thing. No, absolutely he, he, not. He, he, he's a genius, you know, no matter what aspect of a movie he sits in, and I don't know if you've seen some of his original drawings or characters. You know, a phenomenal, I don't know whether you can compare him to the likes of the guys who did Freddy Krueger, because this is all nightmares of his. This is all coming out of his brain, and it, it makes you wonder what kind of sick, twisted drugs he's on. 
Well, or just, was on. Well, considering some of the, the ideas that have come out of his head, like he, I, if I remember correctly, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. He did, had a part in, you know, The Nightmare Before Christmas, I believe. Uh, the Nightmare Before Christmas, he actually did that movie. Okay. And uh, there's, of course, Frank and Weenie. Frank and Weenie, yes. Which is kind of a little bit twisted. And honestly, pretty much anything that he went off and did with his frequent collaborator, Johnny Depp, was kind of twisted. I mean, these guys grew up liking well, the same, you know, TV shows. Well, wait, when you lo- look at it, it's not just, you know, um, Tim Burton that was twisted and all that. Or, or you know, honestly, obviously Johnny Depp, who has a huge part in a lot of those movies. But you got to look at Helen Bonham Carter. His ex, I think, is actually now his ex-wife, and but you know, frequently they work she, together. She still do does appear in movies, and I believe she's she was Tim Burton's wife. She was, yeah, yes, I've, yes. Which was probably one of the main reasons why we saw her in so many of his yeah. movies. And, and she played the part perfectly, especially if you look at Sweeney Todd. Barber, you know, Flet Street. Yeah. Sweet Todd, uh, she was in Dark Shadows, which... Yeah, Dark was, Shadows was Dark another Shadows, good one. Dark Shadows, which was, uh, actually was a TV series that both Johnny Depp and Tim Burton were obsessed with when they were children. Yeah, and of course, you know, she was the Red Queen. The Red Queen, You, you yeah. can't go wrong with that. So, if you had to choose one movie... Just and one movie? Only one movie, and obviously he, he has dozens of great movies... Oh God! So I, I just choose only one movie. If of I his. had to pick just one, oh, I mean, for me, the old school of me uh, definitely would go with uh, his movie uh, in 1989, uh, Batman with Michael Keaton. But you know, there's part of me, and maybe this is, you know, the dad in me, you know, kind of leans more towards uh, Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, see, you know, and obviously being a Tim Burton fanatic, it's really hard and difficult for me to choose one favorite movie, but I gotta go with the very first one that introduced me to Tim Burton and made me fall in love with that genre, with, you know, him as a director and all that stuff, and that's Nightmare Before Christmas. You know, it it was a classic, I had it on VHS, I probably still do somewheres, Well, tucked away... Hiding. And this was really tough for me. Because, I mean, he did Batman. He did Batman Returns. He did Edward Scissorhands. And Beetlejuice, which has got to be up there. Yeah. Well, and and Edward Scissorhands was basically the beginning of what has become a phenomenal career for Johnny Depp. Yeah, that's what I believe was the first time the two collaborated together. Yeah, and that, that started off a lifetime of friendship and... Pretty much working together to the point that Johnny Depp, some of his best work is with Tim Burton, and some of his worst work is with Tim Burton. But, because they've had some, you know, they've had some misses as well. I mean, oh yeah, but you, when you're doing that genre, you, you can't always, you know, have this wonderful, good every time movie. It it it, it is definitely hit and miss. Um, Tim Burton's done some weird ones where you know, not so much that he has had a part in, but he's lended his name to it. Uh, nine comes to mind. Very weird, but very well done movie. I, I really wish I saw the short film version of that. The for me, the the full length film version of that felt a little weird. Another movie that comes to mind uh, is Corpse Bride, which seems to fit very much into you know you know what you expect from Tim Burton. Yes, no, absolutely. Corpse Bride was done, I believe, to a T. I have another won- movie with. Uh, with it, with Helen yep. and with Johnny Depp, I, I have watched that one so many times, and it never gets old. It, it every time you watch it, it's like you're watching it for the first time, and you know it, it's just phenomenal. Edward Scissorhands is another one you cannot go wrong with. Um, just I I saw that for the first time about a year ago, and it's just such a beautiful movie. Yeah, it's I couldn't believe it. I thought you know okay you know. It's going to be one big joke about this. But uh, I walked away and thought, man, not only is this a great genre movie, especially for the likes of us, you know, who really like that sci-fi fantasy stuff, but it's just everything about it was beautiful. Yeah, and and even though it's more of a darker, more twisted, kind of crazy genre, it is perfect for kids. Nightmare, you know, Before Christmas was a phenomenal kid movie. 
it's one of those ones that introduced all the different holidays and, and kind of made a mockery of Christmas especially, oh. which is perfect for us Halloween fans. Yeah, I'm not a huge Halloween fan, uh, but uh, I, I, I will go off, I'm going to admit this here, for the first time, I've never actually seen The Corpse Bride completely from beginning to end. We, we're definitely going to have to have a sit down with The Corpse Bride. You, you cannot be a Tim Burton fan without watching Corpse Bride. Or Nightmare Before Christmas. Nightmare Before Christmas. Or both. Or both. Uh, yeah, Nightmare Before Christmas. I've never actually seen that from the beginning to end. I really feel like I need to see that. Uh, I actually yeah. feel my life is missing something by not having seen that. Yeah, no, I I, I agree. Um, you, you need to watch it. We will definitely watch it. And then we, we're going to stick you into that genre. It's funny. Another movie that just came up that I actually forgot he had done. Uh, was there was a version of the Planet of the Apes, a yes. story in uh, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, yeah. And Tim Roth. Uh, which, which wasn't a, a, a complete hit, but it wasn't a miss either. It, it's kind of funny because I remember uh, Kevin Smith going off and joking that uh, at the that Tim Burns stole his idea for what happens at the end of the movie. And I won't give it away. If you haven't seen uh, his version of Planet of the Apes, Go out and see it, guys. It you know it you know it's pretty good. Uh, if you're really uh, no uh, really careful and you pay attention, you will catch uh, Charlton Heston's uh, appearance in that movie. I remember seeing it in the theaters and only meeting one other guy uh, realized it was Charlton Heston, and we were the only ones who got the the little joke that they go off and do the movie with him. Yeah, he always has little, you know, Easter eggs in most of his movies, and he takes creativity. Like some of his his books, like The Death of Oyster Boy, you know, Melancholy. You know, like it. it he takes. It's just phenomenal what he can do with a storyline and and just basically a pen and paper. He, he's a classic director, classic screenwriter, classic everything. So. Uh, that's pretty much it, you know. Yeah, and yeah, it's. I mean, just as I've said, you know, I I'm surprised just how much Tim Burton has went off and has affected um, myself. I mean, I realized how much he affected you. I mean, that was pretty easy, but to to go back and to just realize that how many of his movies are easily within my top 100 favorite movies of all time, uh, it's just phenomenal. Yeah, no, he has definitely his hand in a lot of different things. I could honestly say he probably has more movies in my top 100 than maybe any other uh, director with the exception of possibly George Lucas and Steven Spielberg. Steven Spielberg. And I guess Peter Jackson as well. Peter Jackson, Steven Spielberg, and Tim Burton are my top three. Yeah. So to have those, those five guys together... You know, or four or five. Yeah, and, whatever. And, and, and <laughs> even though I didn't like Johnny Depp in, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean, I, I thought the storyline was kind of drawn out, but that's my opinion. I, I will go off and I'll say, uh, from Leap and Bounds, that series actually, if the first movie, Black Pearl, is a great movie. They progressively get worse from there, and the last one didn't, uh, oh, whatever, the one that, with Blackbeard. That's just, that was so bad. That was like, that, it's almost like going off and comparing the other three Indiana Jones movies to The Crystal Skull. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, but there's... E- even though I wasn't a big fan of that series of his, I have loved every movie that Johnny Depp has been